you're the AEW world champion. How is it being at the very tippy top of your business? How are you feeling with everything? Let it out. What's going on? Uh, it's super cool. This belt is heavy as hell. Uh, so heavy. Right? Holy so shit. Heavy. And I'm, I'm, I'm having to like carry it around. I have a signing uh, tomorrow. So I'm taking it to Chicago, Chicago. Um, it's great. It's a little surreal. Um, I guess it doesn't sink. I don't know. Maybe I don't know that it ever will sink in at this point. You know what I mean? Um, it's also a little frustrating uh, be- because I've, you know, I've worked so hard for so long. I've won this championship and I have not gotten to wrestle a match since I won it. Uh, and it's been <laughs> three or four weeks. Uh, and I- I've been asking for <laughs> the match with uh, Brian Danielson since you know, the Wednesday after the pay-per-view and I, I just, <laughs> every, every single week I come and it's like, no, he's wrestling. So he's always so, 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 so like, I haven't gotten to wrestle. So then, so it's kind of like frustrating as well. You know, um, I'm sure it probably feels that way for like people in other sports who like, you know, you, you win the Super Bowl or whatever. And then like, you just don't play football for a long time. Right. Uh, yeah. You just, yeah. You're, you're, it's like you're off season all of a sudden. Right. Right. Which is not like what I want at all. So that's a little frustrating. Um, but yeah, otherwise, incredible feeling, incredible feeling to know that, uh, you know, like all of, I guess, myself that I put into uh, everything since, you know, AEW started, uh, it wasn't rejected, it was embraced, um, and it actually helped me achieve something, you know, because it, it totally could have went the other way, where people just, you know, like shit on who you are, or whatever, especially right. become so vulnerable, um, and try something different. Yeah, uh, but it worked. So it's an incredible feeling. Now, Vulnerability before. is key, though. I feel like that is you got to put yourself out there. And I mean, I just feel like this like swell of adoration for you from all wrestling fans. I mean, it is really cool to see. Um, and with like the long term storytelling that has been done with you to get you to this point, how has that sort of felt living that out? Um, You know, like. I wouldn't even talk about at least my journey um, to the AEW World Championship as like some kind of grand scheme that was hatched on day one or something like that because it never was. Um, it, it like, t- at least to me, it was never that way. Uh, I knew like when AEW started and, and I, you know, realized I was going to be suddenly like, I was just the guy like losing all the matches in the bullet, like losing all the Bullet Club multi-man matches. I was you know, not to say a nobody, but I certainly wasn't like the main event guy uh, who was suddenly going to be main eventing the first ever title match in AEW. Like I knew people wouldn't buy it. And it didn't matter like what I said. It didn't matter what I did in the time between. It was too fast. It was too soon. I knew people might, they would be forgiving. They would, you know, go, oh yeah, okay. okay." But I knew deep down they wouldn't buy it. Um, And so it felt like I got off on the wrong foot. and I wanted to rectify that. And it felt like the only way you can is to be vulnerable and to, you know what I mean, let like that loss and that disappointment come out, you know what I mean? Over right. a long time. And every week we would get to TV and it would it wasn't like some grand scheme of how do we get back to Adam Page winning the world title. Mm-hmm. I just would think like, how do I feel about this? What, like, what would I feel about this? And okay, let's do that this week, you know? It's pretty interesting, even just like, um, I mean, I'll kind of date this because this episode won't come out until Tuesday, but um, AEW's Twitter put out the other day, I'm sure you thought of like, what would you rather see? Hangman Adam Page lose the world title or CM Punk lose his uh, undefeated streak? And the internet was up in (laughs) arms. They're like, you cannot let him lose the title. Absolutely not. Like you were trending for a while. Like, well, AEW was not on television This was just a moment that was happening and people were freaking out. Um, So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool to see. I just I love seeing something so organic happen and being able to see the follow through with that and for fans to get the payoff for that. It's so important. I feel like fans so often get burned on things like that. So it's nice to see them and for you, obviously, to, to get those moments. Do you have really crazy fan experiences? Um. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to think of something like super crazy. Like, I, I don't think anything out of the norm that most of us have all experienced, you know? Um, oh, let's see. 
crazy. I feel like women must get very upset that you're married. Does this happen? Does your wife get on the receiving end of some stuff? (laughs) Probably, but I don't know. I don't know that I pay attention to like that stuff enough to know. Yeah. What gets me this, man, this is really starting to cheese me off. (laughs) Has been the people, and I won't even say fans. I would say like the people in like our hotels. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's incredible. Like you might as well just be on my front doorstep. Yeah. Like this is my house for the week. Yeah. Um, and you were in it. You know what I mean? Like get out of here. Um, and there was one, like we were, I think we were in Chicago and I was coming through the hotel lobby, trying to get across the street to the building or whatever. And the guys got like an action figure you know whatever wants to sign and and I'm, I'm moving you know I'm just going I'm like I'm sorry I gotta I gotta run whatever whatever and then for like as on he just keeps yelling and yelling yelling you know what I mean like not taking no for an answer and like as I'm going through the door he he yells like well you signed in Kansas City and all I can think is like what are you doing here in my hotel in Chicago if you saw me in Kansas City what is going on so like it's yeah it's a lot of like the same people like right that are it can be pretty know, wild but- like that would always blow my mind too with WWE where I'd be like wait I just saw you in the town that we were in last week and like I've flown home and then flown to another state did you do the exact same thing like who's funding this I don't get it right I don't get it maybe there's some like I don't know elite secret society of people who, who just hate wrestlers and they, they fund these people. To maybe, maybe that's the case. I, I remember know. there was, um, there was a fan that used to always be front row in WWE had like long hair. And he was like, always there. I think with like his mom or something, but there was like this like big rumor that he was like Vince's love child. And part of the deal was that Vince had to pay for it to be at every show. Wow. I love when stupid shit like that exists and people like lean into that story. I'm like, Oh my God, tell me about it. Please tell me this is real. I mean, obviously it's ridiculous, but um, yeah, it always blows my mind that, that people can just bounce around from state to state and show up to, to every show in every hotel room. But it does really feel like people are like on your front lawn. I used to always get stressed out being like, I just want to run down to the lobby to go grab a coffee, but I'm in like my sweats. I don't have any makeup on and people want to take a photo. You feel like a dick. It's rough. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's so like my list, uh, my rankings list, like worst is hotel, right? Second worst is airport because mm-hmm. it's that's that's still like more of a public place than my than my but it's usually place. really early in the morning. Right. Or for me, it's also late at night too, and I'm getting into the mm-hmm. town. That's when it is for me. And yeah. this week there was like I, it was like 20 people like swarmed me in a circle. So I couldn't escape this time. Like there's no out. So I had to sign my way out of the circle. And I guess I didn't get everybody because I saw my bag, whatever. So I walk and this is at LaGuardia, I think. So I walk like it's almost like a a half a mile to walk to the Uber pickup. And I have that feeling, you know, when someone's watching you and I Mm -hmm. look over my shoulder as I get to the Uber pickup. And there's one of them like that's followed me to essentially to my Uber. And at this point, I'm like, no, I like, I can't, I can't do this. Like, you can't like follow me to my Uber. This is weird, like whatever. And then he's just like going off on me about it as I'm trying to load my bags into the Uber. So my tier list, bottom of the list is in the hotel with me. Mm-hmm. Um, above that is airport. I Fans outside the, the building day of the show, that's, you know, that's okay. I understand that. Cause if you, if you think like, oh, I would love to sure. see so-and-so like in real life, that, that's you know that's where you go sure more of an acceptable place to to show up but on the flip side top of the list people people who send me very nice messages about what you know my character story has meant to them they're awesome yeah uh, even better than that like people who do uh incredible like fan art or like i don't like some guy did like an entire almost like a documentary series about you know my past two or three years that's oh that gosh. stuff's incredible um, so there is a tier list. That's the bottom. That's kind of like the top. <laughs> they make, they make the list. They make the tippy top list. Yeah. That's, yes. that's and very, I feel like if I give fair. a bottom tier list, I have to give you a top as well. Yeah, I know that's cool. fair. You got to give the good with the bad. Certainly.